Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. Today I'm making a Halloween porch leaner for a friend. I have a piece of wood that measures eight inches by 48 inches. She'd like it to say trick or treat. So I'm going to do a negative stencil effect. First, I'll paint the center of the board with ceram coat, acrylic paint, and cheap pea purple. That's where my lettering will go. I've cut my lettering with my silhouette and applied it right over that purple down the middle of the board. With a cosmetic sponge, I'll dab Mod Podge around the edges of the lettering, which will keep the top coat from seeping beneath the vinyl. This will keep my lines crisp. Then I'll paint the entire board with black, including the edges. When the black is dry, I'll use this old stencil to add a harlequin pattern to my entire board surface by pouncing my charcoal paint on with a cosmetic sponge. I love this stencil. It's a personal fave and it gets lots of use. I want my ghosts to be behind my letters. And for the purpose of consistency, I've drawn one onto some cardstock and cut it out. I'll trace them on where I want them. I do this for all of my embellishments so that if I get another request for this sign, I don't have to start from scratch. And then they'll get at least two coats of white paint. Next, I'll work on the lettering. I'll remove the centers of my letters. I'll dab on some Mod Podge, and I'll paint over the exposed purple with sun bleached. I do this because the orange paint that I'm using is somewhat sheer. This will allow for fewer coats and a truer orange. Orange will be the final color, by the way. And now I paint the letters in using Ceram Coat Pumpkin. These letters have two elements to them, the letter and they're surrounded by a shadow. When the orange paint is dry, I'll peel off the rest of the vinyl to reveal the purple shadow. I'll add some of my larger embellishments and base coat them white before getting into the details, which is my favorite part. Wouldn't be Halloween without jack-o'-lantern full of candy. Back up at the top, I'm base coating the moon with Ceram Coat Cantaloupe. It's a yellowish orange, just perfect for my moon, and I'll give it two coats. The candy corn is cantaloupe on the bottom and pumpkin in the middle. Ceram Coat Sweet Pea to base coat the bats. And of course, I'm using Delta Ceram Coat Pumpkin to base coat my jack-o'-lantern. Now comes the fun part. I'm shading the ghost first with Folk Art Floating Medium and Ceram Coat Apple. I dip my brush into the medium 
working it into the bristles. To side load, I scoop up some paint onto the corner of my brush, stroking it on my plate to load the brush. With the paint side to the edge of the ghost, I'll stroke around the outline, reloading as needed. This allows me to add some detail with a faded feather effect to the color. I shade around the letters that are in front of him as well, so it looks like they're casting a shadow on him. I'm stenciling some stars around the moon and that upper section around his head. I cut this stencil with my silhouette. Now I'll shade the moon first with pumpkin, just following the outline. Anytime you see me shading, I'm first prepping my brush with the floating medium. I shade the bats with ceramic coat passion. And I use Passion to shade all the lettering, both the outer purple section and the inner orange section. A bit of passion down the side of the candy corn. And I trace the jack o' lantern's features. I've also cut these from cardstock, again, for consistency. However, when it comes to the candy, I do freehand the individual pieces by following the outline. I always sketch my designs first so I have a reference, and I'll base coat the candy too. All the paints and supplies will, as always, be listed in the description box. Caramel apple? Yes, please. With Hippo Gray, I'll outline Jack's features, then I'll paint them in. And with some white, I'll give him little half moon eyes. Back at the top of the board, I'll add more shading to my moon with Americana's Warm Sunset. I love to add layers of color to my shading, in case you haven't guessed. With a Q-tip, I'll add a little Warm Sunset to his cheek. And I'll shade the jack-o'-lantern sections with it as well. I give a slight curve to the strokes at the top and the bottom to enhance that rounded impression of the bumps.
and then I shade all his facial features. Using Passion, I'll shade all the candy in Jack's head. And I'll float some passion around my moon as well. I'll enhance my ghosts with some hippo gray. I float just next to the apple green, basically following all the same lines and details. And I repeat all this on my other ghost as well. Then I enhance Jack with Hippo too. Now for the finer details. With a liner brush and hippo, I'll give my moon his eye, smile, and brow. Then I'll add some warm sunset dots to make him look like cheese. And hippo for the ghost features too. Dip dotting the bat's eyes. That's our second ghost. Isn't he cute? Applied with a Q-tip, apple for the ghost cheeks, and passion for the bats. They also get a passion smile and little white strokes for fangs. Using a toothpick, I'll dot highlights to the eyes and cheeks of my characters, and the moon gets highlights on his cheese dots too. And with my liner and white, simple strokes along the edges of all my elements to highlight.
added checks to the side of my board because that's how I roll. And since this is an outdoor piece, I'll spray it with Minwax Helmsman Indoor Outdoor Spray. I think I ticked all the boxes. She wanted ghosts, bats, and candy corn. Check, check, check. I love to give these larger pieces a lot of details and layers. I hope you like it and are inspired to make one too. Please like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Leave me a comment or a question. Love hearing from you. As always, stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.